Hey guys, Andrew here. Wanted to do a quick affinity walkthrough on a simple edit I recently did. Um, I've got here a set of images um, from a recent soaked portrait session Josh and I did where we use a hose to generate what looks like rain and heavy backlight. And I've been filming the black and white, so I was shooting them raw, but shooting for black and white. Um, these have already been basically edited. Um, not horribly complicated, mostly just a preset for the uh, black and white. Nothing complicated, mostly done in camera. So, I was looking through them and there's a couple photos here where the rain, the water being sprayed, was not being sprayed over her. Uh, it was, the it, wind was blowing and it got blown away. Um, and then we have a lot of other photos where there's rain all over the place. Photos like this, the backlight actually didn't fire. There's rain there, it just not lit up because there's no backlight. Um, but the key here is I really like this expression right here, this frame. So I wanted to save it, so to speak, um, by bringing the rain in from one of the other uh, images and I figured I would walk you through how to do that. So I've already exported these and opened them in Infinity and I exported the file I want to edit and I picked another one with a similar position about the right amount of rain and opened it as well. So the basic strategy here is the rain is light over a dark background and whenever you see that you should think blend mode. Um, light and only blend mode can get you a long way. So I'm just going to copy this entire image, paste it in here as a new layer, and name that background, and I'm just going to go ahead and make that light right off the bat. Now, there's a little weirdness, right? Her face is there twice. So now I know I need a mask. Invert that. Go away, leave it back. Okay, so now we're going to start just painting out her face, nothing special, zero hard, 0% zero opacity, 100% opacity, excuse me. And I just want to get rid of her face in that layer. Everything from the background layer that isn't rain, I want to go away. Because I want to see just her. Okay. Okay, so super quick way to see if you've accomplished this is to flick this on and off and look around her body to make sure there's nothing changing. Um, I think I've done a pretty good job. You notice I was super down and dirty. I didn't do anything particularly special in terms of being careful. Um, I'm not done yet, right? So like there's her nose. So what we're gonna do is now, the rain's out of focus, so it's not super critical that it be exactly the same size. So I'm just going to switch to my cursor, which V will do for you. And then I'm just going to grab it and hold the shift key. And that makes it scale proportionally. And I'm only worried about this right hand side right now. Okay. I'll scale it so that the range right up against her face because the uh, face in her other, the other image was wider than her face here. Now I'm going to go back to my mask. I'm going to black brush and I'm going to shrink it down shrink down my size a little bit and I'm just going to go over these edges and just make sure I don't have any like right here rain intruding in the front it's not a huge deal because there's all kinds of weird flaring and stuff going on in this image um, but I just want to make sure there's no obvious defects now one thing I am going to do I'm going to just take that right there bring that one hole back in, bring this one back in. Just anywhere along this edge that I think there's something I should bring back in, I'm going to. Okay. Uh, control zero, command zero, we'll go back to 100% zoom. So now I've got the front side just about fixed the way I want it. I'm gonna duplicate this. Control J, uh, command J on a Mac. I don't know why I use Windows keys um, since I'm on a Mac, but old habits, I guess. I'm using a PC keyboard, so. 
So this is not going to be a complicated process. Uh, just take that whole mask, move it over. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to turn this layer off for a second. I'm going to take this layer that we were working on a minute ago and I'm going to get rid of the left hand side. I just, cause I don't really want it there. I don't want to have double stuff there. So I'm just going to paint this whole side out. Okay. So now this layer has nothing on the left hand side of the image. And I'm going to do the same with this image on the right hand side. Um, just to reduce the complexity involved. Okay. Now I'm going to do a similar thing that I did a minute ago. And I'm going to just try to fill back in anything right up against her head. And you'll notice this highlights on her. So see that line right there is not in this frame. That's in the other image. So I don't want that line because that's distracting. But you'll notice the highlights in her hair come through because we're doing light and only and they're brighter than the background. On that top edge. Okay. Here, just a little bit. Okay. So now duplicate the original, put it up here on top just so I can show you. So before and after. And it's a composite, but it's a composite from two frames that were taken, you know, two seconds apart. Um, fill in a, what I'm going to call a uh, equipment defect. Spraying water is hard. Sometimes you don't get it where you want it. So there you go. So whenever you're thinking about trying to fix things, uh, composite things especially, if you've got a part of the image you want to bring in from another image that's brighter than the background, that's almost always a great way to bring it in. And even if there's bright spots, you can mask out those bright spots in the center of the thing you're bringing in pretty easily or vice versa. Uh, but let the light and only blend mode manage the edges and such because that will they'll handle it correctly just by default.